episode. Uh, today I'm going to go over the new T3 top mounts made for the 5th gen Celica. Um, and I'm going to be showing you how they're installed on a T instead of coilovers. When I got these, there was no documentation, there wasn't a whole lot to go by, so I did some research online and tried to figure out how they were mounted. And uh, this is the completed piece, this is how it'll all be assembled, and I'm just going to quickly show you how it kind of all goes together. Alright, the main thing that's different between these is that the teens are only camber adjustable and the T3s have these slots built in that allow for more caster adjustment, actually for any caster adjustment. Also, these are moved back uh, several millimeters to already have built in a base caster. So, I haven't gotten measurements yet, but I, I guesstimate, you know, at least one degree of additional caster. They also come with these swivel bearings, and what they do is they take load off the internal bearing here, and I guess they make it easier to turn, but essentially it's just a bearing built in there with two plates, and it swivels, and it also acts as the top plate. Originally, Tien had these built in, and the way these worked were there's a groove in here that fit over a flat groove on the top of the shock mount, and uh, you would use the tool, as I showed in another video, to disassemble them, and they also acted as the spring top. Um, now, um, I'll be assembling these a little bit differently. Set this to the side. Per Teen's instructions, I went ahead and put lithium grease on the threads, and this is to preserve them. Just It'll attract a little bit more dirt, and it's not as pretty, but it keeps them from rusting up. And I've already put the bottom collars on there to help spread the grease and, and prepare it for installation. So, next what we want to do is, see if you have, I'm putting them together per Teen's instructions for the first part bottom part, helper spring, and then the main spring. I'm going to adjust the camera so you guys can see a little bit better. Okay, so one thing that starts to get different, so they have this full bearing and it goes on here like this, it'll float above the shaft and it'll sit in there, but now there's all this movement because it was, this is sort of a universal piece, it's not designed for these springs. Uh, I talked to T3 and they said typically Japanese springs for the coilovers aren't as big as these, but this is some of Teen's early, I guess their, their circuit suspension and I, I suppose they intended it for, uh, for actual racing. I did forget a couple things, so I've got my rubber bump stop, this goes on top of the helper spring to help keep uh, everything together. But the solution I came up with, Tien in their newer coilovers, they use this rubber spring rest. And I'll put the part number in, in below, but it's LSS01-F1297-8. And it's just a rubber spring seat. very basic and, and they're new to one of their other designs it actually would sit in the bottom uh, but, but what I'm using this for is to keep the spring from movement and luckily just a little bit of work it actually fits right over there on T3's design so it's almost like it was made for it so now once we put it together there's no movement side to side and it helps keep everything locked in place so, I showed earlier this top mount, and this is designed so that you could take off everything. And now that I'm not using that, what I bought is a 16 millimeter uh, bicycle wrench. Uh, they're very flat, maybe like you know two millimeters thick, and it fits right here on the, the flat spot, so I'll be able to torque everything. And I already did on this. Teen recommend for these struts uh, 30, 35 pounds of torque, and uh, it was sufficient for doing that. So, T3 sent a bunch of kind of universal hardware, and I kind of separated. This is stuff I wasn't able to use. They had some top nuts. I think they were designed for the OEM uh, sized threads, but I had I went and picked up a couple things. 
this uh, is the one that actually fits and the, where the rest of them stop on the threads this one actually goes down to the collar so this keeps the top plate centered on the threads um, there was another one and it it stops sure it only stops right about here I've modified it so it doesn't go down as easily um, but what I did is I shaved off uh, a bit of the length so they can actually stack together because I use it to space things so go ahead and put this on here so you make sure everything's in the shot. So we've got the top plate there. And that keeps everything nice and tidy. So then this is going to go on top. Locks it in there. And I'm not going to bother torquing everything right now, but I'm just showing you how it assembles. So I've got this one jam nut. And that's going to go in there and I'll torque it and then I have a nylon topped uh, lock nut that I'll put on top of that and I'll complete it and there's just the cap. And that's pretty much the entire assembly, uh, how it's going to be. Once I put it on the car then I'll adjust the height and get everything where I want it. But for now, uh, it was pretty basic, I just had to do a little bit of research and uh, next I'll show you, I'll go to the car and I'll take this top plate and I'll show you exactly how um, the caster uh, is adjusted and how these top nuts or how these top screws came into a play. Alright here I want to show you the T3 plate mounted up. So I made a couple of changes. I'm using these. Uh, these are actually intended here and I went and found one more set off a junkyard. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm using them as a spacer below. I like to find another one or two more sets uh, just to give it more spacing. When they, T3 provided this with these sort of nuts, and these nuts here are a bit too tall because of the shoulder uh, on the, this uh, strut tower. So what I did is I switched to a button head type. Um, instead of using hex, I went with the 12 point. Even though it's a little bit taller than the, uh, the hex, it, I feel it's better for higher torque applications. So what I'll be able to do now, and this is to show you the movement, is I'll be able to slide these back in here and at this point this head is currently bumping up against the bottom part of the shoulder so I, I think once I space it I'll be able to get it down a little bit further um, and the other reason I want to space it down a little bit further is that way once I have because um, I think right now this is close to, to where stock camber is going to be if I want to push further back I actually can go back a little bit further but if I want to go back all the way as much camber as this will allow I need this to be spaced down uh, to have the combination of caster and camber uh, that, might, that might suit the handling that I'm going after. I'll have to play with it more, but this is really just to get an idea. Uh, this is the, the test fitment and just to sort of fill things out and make it work the way I can. But anyway, thanks for checking out the video. Like and subscribe and stay tuned and we'll have some more stuff coming up on the suspension in the near future.